Richmond County is made up of several rural communities on the southeast shore of Cape Breton Island. People live in villages and small residential settlements, many hugging the scenic coastline. It's home to about 8,000 people from diverse backgrounds. Mi'kmaq, Acadian, Scottish, Irish, and immigrants from other countries and places in Canada. This area of Cape Breton continues to be anchored in cultural symbols and celebrations, and is evolving to take on a new identity inclusive of other people and cultures. Today, Richmond County is home to a variety of people. There is an emerging trend of new people coming, and many who are returning. I moved to St. Peter's because it was close to the place I was born, which was Lordways. I have so many relatives and friends here, even if I worked away for 50 years, it still seemed as if I never lost contact with, with this area. What can I say? I got a beautiful piece of property from, I bought from a cousin, built a house, and uh, it's uh, just having the time of my life. First major job was with a company called Marvin Telecom, and I worked on microwave towers across the country. So it was an incredible job because every two weeks I was in a different town right across the country and, and uh, it's just one of those things I made good money and I worked at it for three years, saved enough money to buy a new car and, and pay for college. So I went to college and after that I got into environmental engineering technology and that's what I spent the rest of my life doing, working for the environment. I find that Cape Bretoners are welcoming and sometimes too welcoming because they want to know everything about you, including your personal affairs and everything else. So when you live in a city, you're not often willing to share all of that information. So it, it requires that you give a little more as well. Basically what you can do here, especially when you get to know people, it's a community that um, seems to care about people. And it's, uh, uh, it's what I enjoy. Many come to Richmond County for a simpler lifestyle, but not everyone is ready to retire, at least not completely. All this here is capped honey. All this here is uncapped honey because it's, it's not less than 18% water yet. They are beautiful capped honey. They use all this to feed their babies. Well, our intent was to move back to Cape Breton in Richmond County, and uh, we had started a little business of having bees in Dartmouth and we took our four, our four hives from Dartmouth and we moved them here and we've since expanded to 20 hives and we rent them out to people for the novelty of having a hive on their property in their garden and people really enjoy that it gives us an opportunity to meet new people and uh, I think everybody has fun and enjoys the bees the 30 40 50 thousand bees in each hive. Bees need help all pollinators need help there's a major decline May it be bats or grasshoppers or butterflies. So honeybees, every third bite that we eat is mostly because of a honeybee has pollinated. May it be blueberry field, apples, oranges I believe too, avocados and on and on and on it goes. So uh, yeah, it is very important to have bees. Partly why we're doing the rent-a-hive thing is so that we can educate people as far as what bees can do and how democratically social they are within the hive and that sort of thing and once people find out about that then they're just as intrigued as we are. In order to provide a living for themselves you have to be cooperative with your neighbors. Compare it to bees and, and Richmond County. In Richmond County the land and ocean support the livelihoods of what has become a new home for some. For CFAs or come from a ways, the opportunities here mean leading a life according to their own agenda. Pebble and Fern Market Garden. And that gets talked about a lot because people ask, well, why did you name it this? And I'm like, it's a much more romantic name than Rocks and Swamp. Yeah. No, we came here because it seemed like a place that we could do the things we wanted to do for money we could afford to do it with. Yeah, it's wide open. There's, there's space for everything that you might want to bring, which can't be underestimated. I found this house on the internet and I was utterly charmed immediately because it was so out of place, a little mansard roof cottage in a maritime fishing village. And 
and it was very inexpensive, which... Well, the joke is it was cheaper than a used car. And having just bought And it actually car, was. <laughs> I, can, I can attest to that. But it is a very welcoming place, and it's very friendly, and there's and lots of super interesting people, and it's incredibly beautiful. It's grown so much. I mean, yeah. we got here in 2011 and came back permanently in 2013, and I used to joke that I missed food. Right. And, and yet in just yesterday, you know, I was in Sydney and I found miso paste at not one, not two, but three stores. And I remember well, and they watching little families arrive back and people who have gone to university somewhere else are actually settling here deliberately and permanently, bringing their small family. And yeah, it's it's changed in the last five years. You can see this demographic even in this little village, which is largely retired. There's three little kids in that house, two in that one, two in that one. It's, it's really alive. I don't find it to be uh, any shortage of anything in this place. Like the healthcare is good. There's a hospital right in town and a bigger hospital right down the road. As soon as I put the gardens in, the whole road from Arishat was paved with brand new paving and like partly end up feeling like for the amount of taxes I pay, how can they afford to provide all of these services? There's and street lights and garbage collection and excellent plowing and uh, plus it's just incredibly beautiful. It's really unspoiled and it's one of the things like I get a lot of tourists coming up in the summer and they're, they're just enchanted with the fact that it's so authentic. There's a lot here. It's really beautiful. You can, nobody's trying to sell you anything. It is the way it is. It's been this way for a really long time. It's a solid place and yeah, they are utterly charmed by that. If I had to describe this place though, I'd say it's pretty libertarian in general. Um, live and let live. Live and let live. And so, you know, we haven't actually experienced, you know, we, I mean, we're curiosity objects for sure, but we've turned that into a, <laughs> a thing, right? You want to, you want to come up and tour the farm and see how we live? That's great. Like, and then people end up charmed by it. Well, it's um, one of those things I do garden tours every afternoon and people who haven't been here before come up and they walk around and look at the birdhouses and the driftwood sculptures. And it only takes a few minutes before they're like, you're, you're not from here, are you? This is different. Like, it's part of what makes it attractive. And growing the way we've ha we have grown, like that slow, steady progression, has led us, for example, this year we have a whole selection of summer students. And we're able to parlay that alternative space into a safe space to bring students in who might not otherwise find, um, e you know, employment in other areas, where this is a, becomes a nurturing place where, you know, they can be as different as they need to be and, and get what they need out of it, not just what we need out of it. It becomes a partnership. Making the choice to live here means choosing a rural lifestyle, and access to transportation is very important. Everyone who lives here needs to be able to go to appointments, run errands, or socialize, especially as people get older. I often take the uh, shuttle to go to uh, different things that you got to do, but mostly to do with uh, stuff to do with the uh, arts of friendship and uh, also to go do some stuff with shopping and you know just the things you need to do oh it is very important or you uh, tend to uh, be alone a lot of the time right and when you open up them opportunities then you meet people and uh, you're able to uh, communicate better like the art of friendship was the first one i took which was very much fun as well as and as well as the people being great people that like to interact with you. Uh, I forget the names of some of the courses. There's been quite a few. It, it goes to show that I'm not the only one struggling with some kind of thing. You can interact with people and find out that they have their issues as well, right? And when you work together, it seems like you're helping each other out, you know? That's what I find. I feel better, yeah feel better for having them available, knowing that they're there for you, right? No, no, look this way. Well, I have of our conversations in French because most of these people speak French. So oh, when they're okay. going from French to English. Okay. They all understand French. What did you guys think of the night? Awesome. It was awesome, yeah. Beautiful, awesome. yeah. When are you having the next one? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? When are you having the next one? Ask anyone, and they would tell you that this is a place where people still care for people. Volunteers know where to find and fill the gaps. In a rural setting that can sometimes be isolating, that means building strong social connections. 
we're recognizing in, uh, in seniors' health, in all health, in, in the whole uh, health spectrum that uh, World Health Organization is saying that isolation is, um, you know, a deterrent to um, wellness. So we decided we'd embrace this concept of around the dinner table. Hosts invite, uh, you know, four or five people that they think are socially isolated and the hosts make a meal for those people and then they engage them in, uh, in conversations that uh, um, encourage uh, um, camaraderie and it has done that. It has done that wonderfully. So I came from England to Canada and then when it was time to retire um, I, our son was at the Coast Guard College and we visited and we came to Cape Breton and we said ah oh, that's where we need to retire to. Along the way it just came along uh, I was invited by the municipality to volunteer for fitness groups and I did that for several years and then they became a bit more serious and said take a yoga course which I did and then became a yoga teacher and for 20 years I've been teaching in all the little communities around Richmond County and mainly now it's seniors and I just love it I love the people but I am learning all the time because um, it, it is a different culture and I've also just discovered that each community has a different culture and it's 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 an experience and a joy and so consequently uh, as I'm aging I'm meeting new people through yoga through the round the table when people say where are you from I say from Cape Breton and they <laughs> look at me like with that accent but yes that's where I'm from and I'm proud to be a Cape Bretoner. The small little communities within Richmond County all have their own character, they all have their own um, activities and, that you can join in and feel such belonging and belonging is one of the utmost things in wellness so you know if you can uh, you know find that um, niche in life uh, it certainly will go a long way to to you know promote your own health and wellness, you know, both mental and physical. And I think being from here, of course, I, you know, I want to, 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 for people to see what a wonderful place we live in. But I also want it to be inviting to those people who are from away and who, who want to see the benefits of being part of a small community and living in rural Canada and Nova Scotia and Richmond County in particular. <laughs>